Once upon a time, in the small kingdom of Beaumontaine, there lived a young princess who decided that when she grew up, she would battle dragons. Scarlet O'Hara was not beautiful, but men seldom realized it when caught by her charm, as the Tarleton twins were. The Duke of Trafin needed to find a wife. The problem was that when it came to picking the right woman for the job, his grace was having a serious run of bad luck. He liked radical politics and had a fondness for chocolate. After 493 years of teleporting from one place to another, Angus McKay still felt an urge to peek under his kilt to ensure everything had arrived in fine working condition. There were some areas where a man, vampire or not, would hate to find himself shortchanged. Eleanor Linden was minding her own business when Charles Wickham, Earl of Billington, fell, quite literally, into her life. It was said Rosamond Isabella Maria Solange Margaret Edwina Langdon was given so many names because she was the last child the seventh Earl and Countess of Twenlin would ever have. But that was only half the truth. In the spring of 1792, Dominic Edward Guy de Alt Ballister, third Marquess of Dane, Earl of Blackmore, Viscount Loncelles, Baron Ballister and Loncelles, lost his wife and four children to typhus. Valentine's Day sucked the big one. Kate Hamilton lifted a mug of hot buttered grum to her mouth and drained the last drop. On the things that suck scale, it ranked somewhere between falling on her face in public and her great aunt Edna's bologna pie. One was painful and embarrassing, while the other was an abomination in the eyes of the Lord. His utter madness. Eleanor, Lady Standen, would have declared if someone had told her that in the course of an hour she would fall in love with a man, and an ordinary one as well. He was drunk, gloriously drunk, more drunk, drunker than he'd ever been. In ancient times, weddings were a little more casual than they are today. Rival tribes, in order to increase their population, would frequently stage raids against one another with the sole purpose of acquiring brides. That's right, they'd steal one another's lady folk. Ryder Remington, Marquess of Newbury, stared across the sleazy tavern and saw what he most desired, a flame-haired winch. Meow. It wasn't every day a guy saw a headless beaver marching down the side of the road, not even in Dean Robillard's larger-than-life world. In times of yore, when Druids roamed the northern forests of England and held their Sabbaths in the dark of the moon, a young man grew enamored with battle and violence and studied the arts of war until none could best him. Don't move. Don't even breathe. 